Thanks all, and it's always nice being between you and lunch, uh, so I will try not to take too much more of your time. Um, so, uh, kind of presenting Sysdig and the Sysdig Secure DevOps platform, the, the, one of the great things about OpenShift and one of the things it's a pleasure working with the Red Hat team on is, as you, as you mentioned before, it is absolutely secure by default. There's a lot of security controls in there. There's a lot of security controls within Red Hat's, not just in terms of OpenShift. You've got the OpenS cap and Insights and so on. So you've got a lot of this protection stuff already out of the blocks. Um, so how can, how can security vendors like Acura and ourselves come here and actually help you improve on this? Well, it's about making sure you've got more than just the, 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 the basic levels. As you start scaling this out, you go beyond a single cluster, you go beyond your test environments. How do you manage that when you've got 10, 20, 30 different cluster environments? How do you manage that when you scale across two or three different cloud environments? You want to have that single view for things. Um, and if you haven't, you know, the, the, again, the Aqua team have been doing some great work with eBPF. If you haven't had a look into eBPF, definitely look into it. It's one of the, because it gives you such low level visibility, it's absolutely, you know, some people are touting it as kind of the future of observability, but it's also in many respects the future of security in general. It, it, it's analyzing all those system calls. And that's core to what we're doing as well with Sysdig. And I think you'll see many vendors using, going down that route because it really is such a great low, low impact, but high level information in there. So we leverage that, that kind of kernel level information to give you two really core bits of information. That's observability for telemetry. Are my applications healthy? Are they good? Now, yes, you get this out of Prometheus. In Open, OpenShift 4, you're going to get Prometheus out of the box. But it's digging deeper into that information. It's working out how do I actually get the context of that? How do I dig deeper into my applications, understanding why is my performance bad? Where are my bottlenecks appearing? Um, and then again, giving you that view across multiple clusters. Um, so giving that low level information is really important. As touched on, the great thing about eBPF is it also gives you lots of great security context. Are my applications doing what they should be doing? Are my forking processes? Is my Nginx making calls, outbound calls to the internet? Is my RabbitMQ server forking a Python process? These things are really easy to detect. The great thing about containers is they should do one thing and they should do that one thing well. So it should be really easy to work out when that's doing wrong. But how would you know today that your Nginx server is doing something other than Nginx? So that's really the level of information we're looking at providing. Um, <clears throat> so, so it is about combining this. I'm going to skip through this just in, in view of time and get more into what are the different areas we, we cover. We, we talk about this as the idea of build, run, and respond. So a build time, this is when you're absolutely, you're building your containers, you want to make sure you're, you've got security best practices, you haven't got config drift, you're going through just general container best practices. You also may want to make sure you're not baking in vulnerabilities at that early stages. This whole idea of shifting security left is really important because you want your developers, you, you want your application and development teams to have security in mind. And the real way to do that is to give them feedback. Make sure they know. Most of the time, traditionally, when it comes to security, we didn't know we had a security problem until we put it in production and the firewalls and all the other security tools turn around and says, no, you can't do that. And then we learn and we go back. Getting this information as early as possible is important. It's that whole agile methodology of getting fail fast, get that feedback in there as well. So pushing this back at the build time. And of course, at the runtime, as the Aqua guys were showing, you can have things embedded that you have no idea are there. It's the great and terrible thing about containers is I can download something from the internet, have no idea what it does, but have that running in a production workload. So being able to create these profiles to work out what's good, what's bad, what's ugly, what's indifferent. <clears throat> Making sure you've got that view of both application health and application security. And then finally, what happens when things go wrong? Uh, Werner Vogel's massively quoted, everything fails all the time. Um, and it's true, you have to go in with this with the approach of my applications are going to fail at some point. In a very similar way from security, a lot of people have the approach and have the view that I am going to have a security breach at some point. Some people have a slightly more negative view that I've already had a security breach, I just don't know it yet. Um, being prepared for this, having the ability to actually capture and analyze those events at low level after, the, after the, something bad has happened is really, really important. That's the idea of what we talk about with Respond. 
And of course, this happens across the full life cycle. You've got dozens and dozens of tools. OpenShift is one part of your tool chain. You've no doubt got all sorts of DevOps tooling these days. Uh, and it's making sure you can have these integrated rather than going from dashboard to dashboard to dashboard, making sure you've got that nice clean flow. Introducing more tools to your DevOps teams is not gonna get them to adapt stuff. You wanna make that simple. Uh, checking the time, I'm not gonna go through that slide. It's in here, so you've got a reference. Um, and that's probably about it. Uh, so we have got a booth upstairs. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to labour too much of this because I because I can smell that food, and I'm sure you can as well. Um, so get some foods, get some energy back in, and come talk to us later on. Look forward to having some drinks with a few of you as well. <laughs>